Hello and thank you for watching our videos on Sane Auto YouTube. I'm your host Victor Sane. I've been ASE certified since the 1980s and master certified since 1991. Today on this video we're going to show you how to change the fluid on a transaxle on a 2010 third generation Prius hybrid. <laughs> First of all, I'm starting with some jacks and, of course, coffee and fluid and my cardboard and a funnel and some hoses. I'm going to make something. You're going to see that. Toyota has provided this handy spot right here where you can jack. Now, in my other videos, you'll see me using a board between the jack and the car for a totally different reason. On the edge, I like to use it to keep from crushing the lip. It's a pet peeve of mine. It always hurts me a little bit when I look underneath the car and I see those claw marks from the jack where people have been willy-nilly sticking the jack under the edge and just crushing the lip and damaging the bottom of the car because they won't take the time to use a piece of 2x4 and spread the pressure out over a larger area. Here the reason I'm using the board is I need a little bit of extra space because my jacks that I use are bigger than most people's jacks and they're higher even at the lowest setting. So I need the car to be a little bit higher so I can get my jacks under it. I am of course talking about the safety stands, so please forgive me if I use the terms interchangeably. They're not technically jacks, they're safety stands. In the back, there's some sensitive stuff so you have to be very careful where you put the jack. There's a gas tank. Just above that there's batteries. There's all kinds of suspension components, but there is this support right here that sticks way down to give you something to put your jack on. If you're using a piece of 2x4 or wood back here, make sure that you're careful to center your jack pad right underneath the jacking point. Don't get it way over here on the board while the jacking point's way over there. You just flip the board and then you're going to damage something with the board and with the jack. It defeats the whole purpose of using the board. Okay, as you're looking at the front of the car, you dive down under the car, on the passenger side, and head towards the driver's side, and I hope you can see that there he is. Let me make sure i got the camera pointing at it. There's the drive shaft right here. There's a fill plug right here, and there's your drain plug right here, drain plug. And these are 10 millimeter Allen. So if you have a socket, you can use your air impact. That would be great. Just make sure you've got it on backwards and not forwards. Yeah. Same thing with your ratchet. You don't want to tighten these up any tighter than they already are. Um, do not get this plug over here. This plug over here is a drain for coolant. That is a whole nother video for doing that coolant change. We're just dealing with the transmission fluid here. And you want to take the fill plug out first because you want to see if just how full the thing is before you pull the drain to see if you've got any leaks or any kind of mysterious fluid loss. Um, hopefully you'll find that it's full and you won't have any worries about that. Make sure you have a drain plug, I mean a drain pan ready. Before we go any further, I do want to show you the car jacked up at all four points so that we have it nice and level when we take the fill plug off. That'll tell us truly whether it's full or not. And then when we fill the thing back up, we also want it to be level so we're filling it to the true full level point. If your vehicle still has the big shield down under here, it's just a matter of popping some push pins loose with a flat screwdriver and a few 10 millimeter bolts. I don't remember if there's any eight millimeter bolts involved in that or not, but I'm pretty sure there were some 10 millimeter bolts and other ones that I did. Okay, now with the fill plug out, you see a little droplet forming right there that tells me that it is up to the full level. The other thing that tells me is that once I get the drain plug out, 
I will be able to get the fill plug out because it's already out. One situation you do not want to be in is you do not want to take the drain plug out first and then find out later that for whatever reason the fill plug is either stripped out by somebody previously working on it or it's seized in there and and if you can't get the fill plug out you want to be sure that you don't already have the drain plug out okay I've broke this plug loose and let's get it the rest of the way out I hope I don't get my whole arm drenched here, here it comes. oh yeah that stuff is nasty Oh, this needed it bad. Don't don't lose this little washer right here. It almost came off. Careful not to lose that washer. The fill plug has a washer like that too. This is another reason why I like I like using a piece of cardboard because you see the cardboard caught that little bit of a spill. And if you drop something hard to find like that little washer or something, it's gonna be it's really easy to see stuff when it lands on the cardboard. One thing you can't tell in the video is the smell. It's got a bit of a different smell from other transmission fluids. Of course, it is a CVT type unit, and it has a generator, motor, all that down inside there with the differential. And the additives are a little bit different for this type of unit. So it does have a little bit different smell. But luckily, this one doesn't have a burnt smell. I mean, not an overwhelming burnt smell. So I'm hopeful that that means, you know, no damage, no burn clutches or anything like that. But it does give a, a, a tint of a roadkill type smell, and that's kind of normal for a CVT. I definitely don't use crushed roses for an additive in these. When you're tightening these, if you get it snug and then go about a sixteenth of a turn, if you've got a torque wrench, or, then by all means use it. But if you don't, then you know snug and break it loose again snug is right about there and then about a sixteenth of a turn oh yeah let's go swimming dive right in guys okay i use a combination of funnel and transmission hose to go down in there from the top and work my way through the back Underneath here, all the way to the fill point and the hose down in the fill. I hope you can see it because I can't see it from where I'm at. I have to feel up in there. I have at least half a different dozen different pumps and attachments and everything I use for for different fluids and different applications. But every one of them right now has a different type of fluid for a different application. And none of these right now are being used for the Toyota fluid. And I would have to flush one out, clean one out, lose a lot of fluid. And it's just much quicker and easier. It's also be much quicker and easier for you to make the funnel with the hoses that I did. Because you're probably not going to have all these pumps and barrels and stuff. Oh, let's get this open. Should have checked this first, but hey... Perfect either. Okay, please, please, please be the right Toyota fluid. Yes! Ta-da! Toyota ATF WS. The WS is what you're looking for. The Toyota WS. Um, there are some aftermarket fluids that you can order, but they're if you order the I'll put a link in the description um, to the Toyota fluid that's just a tiny bit more than the Aftermarket fluid, so it's not it's not worth taking a chance on the aftermarket fluid. Uh, of course, it'd be more if you tried to walk walk into the Toyota and get it, but this isn't going to take all four quarts. But we'll put three in there first, and then we'll start checking it by pulling the hose out a little bit and reach down in there and feel for the the fluid. Now I don't. I'm not recommending that you stick your finger down in that hole and check for the fluid. You can make a little piece of tool out of something nice and clean and something you know is not going to break off to uh, reach down in there and look. If you're in doubt about the, the smell of the old fluid, you can take the top off of the new and before you pour it in there, just get an idea. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's not dead skunk. Maybe dead squirrel. Mm. 
you can see the difference in color. The, the stuff that came out was quite a bit darker than that. So it, it definitely needed to come out of there. Now it's time for me to check my hoses and stuff underneath to see if it's pouring out a puff. It's not dripping or pouring at all. It's just going right into the transmission. Put some more in here. I keep saying transmission, it's, it's actually a transaxle. Anything front wheel drive technically is a transaxle. Is the correct term. Uh, some hybrids like to call their transaxle a power distribution unit or something like that with a short anachronism like a PDU, PDU or something like that. Some even claim that theirs doesn't have a transmission and then they say PDU or whatever their anachronism is for their power distribution unit. But to me, after building transmissions for over 25 years, it's it's still a transaxle. It's a transmission with a differential in it. Two axles coming out of it. It's transverse mounting. It's between the engines and the wheels. Now some of the full electric cars like the Teslas and stuff, they claim they have no transmission. That's actually true. They have a motor mounted directly to a differential. If they say that's no transmission, I would agree with that. But when you have a something like this that has planetaries in it, drums and clutches in it, transmission fluid in it, If you want to call it a transmission, I'm not going to argue with that. Or a transaxle. Or a PDU. Or some other anachronism. Just, I don't care if you're Ford, Toyota, GM, and you tell me that it doesn't has no transmission in it, I'm not going to believe that. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with any more of this ramblings and fluid pouring. That's three quarts. I'm going to let it sit there and make sure that all of the fluid goes down through the hose into the transaxle. And then I'm going to check it. And then I'm going to start putting some more of that fourth quart in there until it's full. In the meantime, I want to let you know there's going to be quite a few more repair videos and maintenance videos on this hybrid vehicle. And please comment below. I know a lot of people either hate these types of hybrid vehicles or love these types of hybrid vehicles there's not a lot of people in between so if you would comment your thoughts on these types of vehicles below in the comments below and if there's any repairs or uh, maintenance you've done on these vehicles you want to give people some insights put that in the comments below too please okay so here it is folks there's only that little bit left right there in the fourth quart so almost four quarts, no matter what the books say, you're going to use up almost all of the fourth quart before it's full. So I would go ahead and put three and a half in there before even bothering to check it. I hope this helps you a lot, saves you a lot of time and loads of money. Uh, we have lots of other videos that could save you time and money. Be sure to check that out. We have them all busted up into a whole bunch of different playlists on our channel, St. Auto. Till the next video. Get off the couch and get dirty. Hey, don't forget to put your fill plug back in. If ingested, do not induce vomiting. Mmm, smells yummy. Don't do anything I do in my videos, and don't even do anything I talk about in my videos. Welcome to St. Auto. We're so glad you're here. We don't just do repairs and tool reviews. Bienvenida a St. Auto. Nosotros no solamente hacemos reparaciones de autos. We also film hot rods and mod rods, project cars, classic cars, antiques. Nosotros también filmea autos antiguos, 
Mod Rods, Hot Rods, Quakia. We also like to take you with us to the car shows and the cruise ends, so make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything. Me la gustaría llevarte con nosotros a los cruise ends y car shows. Entonces, empuja ese botón y toca la campaña para no pierda nada. Thank you.